Hello, welcome back to the Archuria Synthi B tutorial series. Today we're dealing with the modulations page, which has a lot of stuff in it, but having just dealt with the functions and joystick pages, a lot of it is actually replicated functionality. So we should be able to whistle through this quite quickly. Let's start with the parameters tab. We've got two separate tabs here that we need to deal with. Let's deal with parameters first. And you notice I'm, I'm not going to turn the modulations page actually on. What I'm going to do is uh, press a note on the keyboard and then increase the oscillator one frequency offset. The reason I did that is to show you that all the values in this matrix are always live. By turning the modulation page on, we activate the various modulation options inside the page but the offset values in these grids are actually live and in play. So don't presume that you can turn this off and the entire thing gets disabled. That's not true. Having said that, we are going to turn it on and we'll do exactly the same thing again. Offset is basically just a flat arbitrary additional control voltage on top of whatever's going on at the time. So if I hold down C on the keyboard, with oscillator one frequency enabled, I'll just turn the volume down a little bit and increase the offset. It literally just arbitrarily raises the pitch. And because we've got um, control down to a thousandth of a unit, we can right click and achieve very fine adjustments. adjustments. Of any of the values that we can assign parameters too so even though we see these four column headings at the top just like with all of the other modulation pages we can set this to whatever we want so let's have a whiz down each of these rows because basically we've got four different modulation destinations let's have a look at the various sources we've got available to us well we've seen offset that's just a pure arbitrary additional control voltage number the next one down however says sequencer and this isn't to be confused with the keyboard sequence with nothing to do with that. I keep saying, you know, these additional pages, these advanced pages are additional functionality on top. Use a lot of the same terminology, but they're not the same. So this sequencer is referring to the step sequencer, this thing here. And what we've basically got is a 32 step sequencer. You might just be able to see in the background, there's kind of a strobing effect. This thing is basically on all the time and it's current, currently free running. If I use the pencil tool to draw a shape, I'm just clicking and dragging, as simple as you like. Um, I'm just gonna double click this offset value that I was messing with earlier, turns it off. And now I'm gonna apply a modulation um, adjustment to the sequencer instead. So now these bars are going to uh, specify an, a control voltage amount that's really governed by this kind of master number that ultimately is going to be applied to oscillator one's frequency. So as I bring this value down in the matrix, all of those control voltages basically get squashed, they get attenuated. just as with the other pages we can see that like 0 0.1 is still a pretty dramatic effect the the control voltage um variation from from 0 to 1 is absolutely huge so here we've got our 32 step sequencer but it doesn't have to be a 32 step sequencer we can specify how many steps we want it to be so now it's just a 16 step sequencer and you can see that the stuff on the right hand side has been grayed out but not removed it's just kind of disabled really and we can also determine how fast the thing runs we're currently in sync but if we click the sync button and move to free mode that's currently at five seconds per step but if we pull this right down that's now half a second per step And you can hear that really heavily quantized effect. It's like a sample and hold kind of effect. 
we can um, mitigate that with the smooth feature. So this will basically like, do a little mini portamento between each of the control, vol uh, control voltage values. So at zero, it's an absolutely hard stop. You do hear that wow, 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 but it's not absolutely smooth. Then we've got direction controls at the moment. We're just in forwards. Probably don't need to explain this. It's pretty straightforward. That's forwards and backwards. And this is random. So we just literally start jumping all over the place. We have a, a line tool. Click, drag, obviously enough. And we have a delete tool. Just basically left click and drag. If I just head back over to the pencil for a moment and draw some stuff and then right click and drag across, then a right click in pencil mode acts like delete. So you pretty much don't really need that. This is a random shape generator. You really can't be bothered drawing the, the graphs yourself and you just want something chaotic. And this is a reset button. So really nothing fancy at all, just perfectly functional. But obviously from that point onwards, those sequence of values can be assigned to any one of four destinations. So if I currently assign to the uh, oscillator frequency, but we can also assign it to the filter at the same time. Really straightforward stuff. Our LFO is down here. Same kind of thing. I don't know why this naught is in there by default. That's just what you get with the, when you first come into this page. So if I uh, set a little bit of oscillator one frequency and we're currently in sine wave mode. Slow it down a bit. You see it's repeating at the moment, it's repeating um, infinitely. If I specify the once button, it'll do it exactly once. So it comes back up to the center point and then just rests and doesn't go any further. So we've got sine wave, triangle, I think we've got sawtooth up and down, square wave and random. <laughs> That's a very wide range it's operating on. This don't don't be distracted by the sequence up above. That's not doing anything. We're, we're looking at the LFO here. Over an absolutely spectacular range of uh, frequency frequency variations. Velocity. This is how hard you hit the key. Uh, really gently. Louder. Oh. and keyboard applies a control voltage that whatever would ordinarily be used to determine the pitch of a key. So every key on the keyboard has its own control voltage value. That's a specified absolute fixed value. So the easiest way to demonstrate this is for me to play a regular unadulterated C. And there you can see it on the tuner, C2. Then if I apply uh, keyboard modulation to the frequency's pitch and play that note again. So we get very nearly a C4. So that's increased the, the pitch of the, the note that I just played by nearly two octaves. Now I'm going to pull this value down whilst holding the key and you'll hear that pitch range reduce back to, towards the original C2 that we started from. So there we are at E2 now, so we're what, four semitones above the original noted pitch. 
Now what I'm going to do is play a note exactly one octave lower and the difference between the note that I'm actually playing and the note that we're hearing will be less than four semitones because it's a smaller control voltage that's being applied to the uh, pitch's frequency modulation. So I'm playing a C, and there we're now at E flat. We're only three semitones away. And so when I play a note on the keyboard, two things are happening. The oscillator itself is trying to generate a pitch of the key of the note that I'm playing. I'm playing like C2, but then there's a control voltage value that's being applied over the top of that, which is then adjusting its, its frequency. So I'll go, I'll step up the, the octaves. C3 becomes an F, C4 becomes a G flat, C5 becomes a G, and then all the way up here, a really sharp G. So the, the, the differences get bigger and bigger and bigger. After touch, press into the key. Straightforward. And odd wheel, pretty self-explanatory. It's me moving the mod wheel. I must still have mod wheel mapped to the joystick when we were looking at, uh, there you go, map mod wheel to Y. It's from our previous video. So that's all the different um, modulation effects from the parameters tab. Then when we head over to the groups tab, everything looks pretty much the same, except that now we're not dealing with modulation destinations, we're dealing with pin matrix offsets. And this is where we can group collections of pins together and apply modulation to them. What I'm gonna do is draw a shape with my step sequencer. I'm going to assign the sequencer's output to group A. And then I'm going to specify which pins are going to be affected by group A. So in the pin matrix, group assign, click the little A button, and then select the keyboard's oscillator frequency. So this now means that this sequencer shape is going to apply a control voltage modulation to the pitch. Uh, these, these pin offsets don't operate in the same insane ranges that the standard modulation parameters do. So this is actually a reasonably sensible step control. If I click on this um, output button, then in addition to controlling pitch, modulating pitch, I'm also modulating the volume at the output. Let's also get a um, bit of filter modulation on the filter frequency. So all these three pins have now been grouped together. And any modulation that's applied to this column in any of these values, let's stick a bit of LFO on as well. So we're getting the combination of those two control voltages wreaking absolute havoc on the sound. We've also got a column multiplier down here. So because you can have individual values in each of the cells, but they're all tying back to group A, we can apply an overall, an overarching multiplier to the entire column. I'm just going to disengage the volume one. So we're still modulating the pitch and the filter just by a different, by a smaller amount. That's the modulations page dealt with. Hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please consider subscribing, hit notifications, and you'll catch me next time. Thanks very much.